Welcome back to episode 73 of the Disorganized Wizards Club podcast. My name is Alex. I'm here as always with Adam Hello. and Cam. Hey. And we're a group of Ottawa-based players that play just about anything and everything we can qualify for. We talk about decks, tournaments, stories, just about anything to help you and ourselves get better at magic. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. So I, I have a question. The last time I traveled out of Ottawa was to a GP in Toronto, mm-hmm. and someone recognized me by my voice from being on the podcast. So did anyone recognize you while you were in El Salvador? <laughs> <laughs> Well played. <laughs> no. Well, I guess I'm more famous than you then. Yeah. Just weren't doing a lot of talking, just sitting around. <laughs> yeah, did Probably a lot of around. lounging, a lot of beer drinking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was a great time. I had such a good time. I was basically on vacation for the last week too. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have a podcast to record. Didn't do it. That was it. I just didn't do anything. That was your only commitment. I read a novel, you know, that was, yeah. What were you read in 2018? Yeah, I was. Well, I wasn't even in prison <laughs> <laughs> without access to internet and, and or television. The only oh. place for books. So old school, man. Yeah, dude, taking Jeez. it back. Dude. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Reading's making a comeback. I mean, not in, not in magic though. No one's reading magic cards. That's why no one ever knows what rules are. <laughs> like, oh my god, that card's a four three. Man, two, I mean, two. How do you expect players to read cards when you just get savagely chirped every time you read your opponent's cards? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a It's thing. really disincentivized. But You're really just not yeah, allowed yeah. to read cards ever. I am looking forward to doing a, like, a Magic 25 draft and having like newer players not who are not familiar with like old templating just like wildly mess up all these old cards. I haven't even really looked at the spoilers because I'm not going to play it. Um, I just too rich for my blood. Yeah. Plus, I, I already I don't know half the cards. Is, but hey, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's nothing really it, I want out of that set. If you do want to play, play some Masters 25 drafts and sealed events, uh, be sure to come on down to Wizard Tower, <laughs> where you can also go to their website and order your singles online. They have free yeah. shipping in Canada at yeah. WizardTower.com. Yeah, great sponsor of this podcast. Highly recommend checking them out. Um, Standard showdown this weekend. This oh, weekend? Yeah. This weekend, yeah. Tomorrow. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe. What's going on at the tower? I don't know. I haven't, che- I haven't actually checked the events. All I'm busy tomorrow, so I didn't check. Come now. But I, back to my actual question. Like, if I know Jace is in the set, like Blood Moon, yeah. Hordling Outburst at Common, because I saw in our chat somebody yeah. was like, come on. <laughs> for Popper. <laughs> <laughs> for Popper, yeah. Uh, but I don't know what else is actually in the set. Uh, Oh, on ports because somebody specifically messaged me yeah, being like, "Hey, Adam, like just so you know, these ports, you know, because like I've been meaning to put like I have every card in Death and Taxes except for ports. Like I just I own like one or two ports, I think, from when I was a kid, but I don't have a playset, so now I'm kind of like uh, Asusa is in the set. There's also a red ele- elemental blast. Oh yeah, the blast, blue elemental reprinted. blast. Oh, but those were like a dollar. They're still there, man. Yeah. That's that is sweet though. Maybe they were like five bucks actually. Yeah. I think they might have been like an expensive because uh, they're old. They were an old card from Ice Age and stuff, right? There was some other iconic card I don't remember. Oh, Doomsday. Armageddon. Imperial Recruiter. Oh, Imperial Recruiter is a huge reprint. That's sweet. Biden to Thassa. God. Tree of Redemption. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some. And that card's so trolls. Dude, this set, Corsair Crucifix, this set's crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah, like the set oh, Elvish like, Piper. Man, when I was a kid, I don't know, like, I played Brody Magic a long time ago when I was a kid. Elvish Piper was one of those cards that everyone was just like, how do you... Like, that yeah. card's actually unplayable. Like, you know, in the current in current standard, right? Like, if somebody played Elvish Piper, you'd just, like, laugh. You'd be like, what are you going to do, you know? Like, what's the worst <laughs> you're going to play? Like, well, I'm just trying to think. Like, what were they going to put in the, like, indestructible white dragon or something? Like In standard? Yeah, it would definitely be the indistinct. Yeah, the, uh, the white, white dra- uh, dino. The white dino is pretty good. Um, you can Zakama's put not Zakama. even that good because it doesn't... Un- I mean, if I feel like on turn four, you can play Zakama for one and bolt something. No, it's turn five because this thing has summoning sickness. Oh, it costs four? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but we can put this into play with our champion. Uh, champion of Ronus also costs four. Right, that's um, what I'm getting at. <laughs> so, like, but I remember, you know, like, the card is just, like, not really that playable. Um, in most formats, yeah. In most formats, but like I remember being a kid and it was like just the most busted thing in the world. <laughs> Playing that in some weather seed tree folk. Yeah, folly every There's decophobia in this set too. Well, it's got to go through Tree of Redemption. Oh, wow. Yeah, you got to draft around it. Yeah. Right? Because isn't Tree of Redemption 13? Yep. Yep. There you go. Because everything on Innistrad is 13. Mm-hmm. Spooky. Drinking age. Yeah, 13. honestly, there's nothing in this set I would want. <laughs> 
voting age. 13. That's why everything went to hell. Everyone voted for the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like it'd be interesting to play. Oh, I know. There's like Utopia Sprawl Arbor Elf. Ugh. That's all I'd draft. It'd be a train wreck forever. Well, they reprinted Dusk Legion Zealot. Speak that of the a devil. Fast reprint. <laughs> we were just talking about how that. Yeah. And Colossal Dreadmoth. These every, are some iconic cards. Every black standard deck, we said that Dusk Legion Zealot. It should, every black standard deck should play Dusk Legion Zealot or Glen Sleeve Siphoner or both. And or, yeah. A horseshoe crab? Oh, there's relentless lap. Relentless rats in this set. How many uh, man. of that copy? They printed Mana War and uh, yeah. Reflector Mage. What were they? I mean, Mana War is just like busted too. Yeah, not as good as a Reflector Mage though. Come on, this Reflector Mage is way more though. iconic. Man, I played a lot of yeah. Reflector Mage flanks. got banned. And so also iconic. recently there was the I Theros suppose. flashback drafts. Return Phalanx. Man, that card. I played a lot of that card. Yeah, that's a good card. Two mana, three three Defender. Yeah. That's just mm. a good rate. Phantasmal Bear. Retraction Helix. Oh, that card was sweet. Potential popper all star Phantasmal Bear. Was it not a common before? Uh, no, no, it is. No, it is. But like, oh. it's just not seen, it doesn't see that much play, but I think it's actually like very good and should see more play. Problem is, there's a lot of two threes and stuff. Oh man, old school Nickel Bolas before he was a planeswalk. That card is so bad. They reprinted Vindicate. Yeah, that card is awful. Like old Nickel, like Nickel Bolas has come a long way. I'm really proud of his growth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mystic Snake, too. <laughs> Yeah, Mystic Snake. Oh, yeah. Cloud Blazer made yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this set looks pretty fun. I mean, in the sense that it's... Okay, my real question is, though, is there Mana Fixing? Uh, uh, there's Coalition. Oh, Lord. yeah, they printed... Uh, well, I mean... Uh, Lord. Prophetic Prism. Yeah, oh, God. There's the Filter Lands at Rare. And there's a bunch of, like, uncommon... Oh, yeah, like, they reprinted, search, like, search the lands. Cast. Yeah, so this is bad. Ash you can, Barons. Can yeah. you play Five Color Pile in this set? Yeah, you set? can. Oh, yeah, 100% you can. How? You base green. There's Utopia Sprawl, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and there's like a bunch of green fixing probably because like that's just what green's famous for. Oh, yeah, there's like cultivate. cultivate. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's so this is over. Like this All format right, is a horrible train wreck. Like <laughs> anybody who's listening to this and you're gonna go play Masters twenty five, you just spend your cultivates first cultivates and like utopia. Spend balls. your first pack getting fixing, and then just take every good card in any color. And yeah, you'll well, like people. you don't even you can just take whatever rare you want first too if it's busted. Like, oh yeah, you know because like you're just gonna take base green, splash everything else, and smash. Like, well, yeah, that's just the strategy for every master set, though. Right, like that's it sucks. Well, that's not true. The ma- like 2017 Modern Masters three or whatever it was when they had signets, you didn't need to be base green. Yeah, they had signets. You How far? Do whatever you want. Oh, I'm talking you- about like five color pile as an overall strategy. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was just verifying that once again. We can just play a five color pile because did they just can't balance these limited sets at all? Well, I mean, no, yeah, there's only so much you can do. Like when you're thinking about the whole purpose of this set is to reprint these old powerful cards, right? And like powerful so, like, commons are cultivate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like those are busted commons. Like you've got to print them. Yeah, balancing sets like this is it's not, not possible. Yeah. Um, question, a theoretical question. I know this is like really off topic for our podcast, just talking about a master set, but. If you were drafting this set, would you take in your five color pile uh, a Phyrexian Obliterator? That's what I was just going to ask. Like, how far can we go? Can we go like base green, red, white, maybe splashing a blue creature, like splashing a Jace and a Phyrexian Obliterator? Man, how good is your deck? <laughs> <laughs> it's average, six out of 10. No, uh, probably not. That's probably too deep. Yeah, I wouldn't go that deep. Oh, Obliterator. Man, Master of the Wild Hunt is in this deck. Have you played against that card? No. It's so incredibly miserable to play against. Read that card. Just free like in limited? Spells. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's not fun. Like, Man, it only makes one one wolf, though. It's not as good as Tender Shoot Dread. card sucks. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but you just get to no, like, that seems, shoot stuff down. It's so yeah. busted. It's so good. Yeah, that card's so <laughs> insane. Also, what is Tree of Redemption again? You can just put your life total 13, right? Yeah, you exchange your life total with its toughness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Only yours? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess like, it's a black one. They have to 13 you in one shot, man. That card's high. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was trying to remember for sure what it did. I think some decks played it in the sideboard in like its standard time, but I. Yeah, no, they did for sure. Yeah. I, I, I did. I yeah. Played, I had it in my standard sideboard. For People a bit. definitely played it in the sideboard at some point. That card is like. You get to block too. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that card's goofy. You sure do. That card's <laughs> goofy as hell. Yeah. I love it. And then your opponent sideboards in the Triska deck of Phobia against you and gets you. Cool. Oh, oh, Biden Athasa, man, the Theros flashback drafts on Moto like, were sweet. That card's great. 
Spear of Heliod. I was so I could not win a game in that format. I love that format. Uh, I don't miss it. I was I'm, really bad at that format. Despite how much you're complaining about like cultivate and utopia sprawl or like these these ramp strategies, they're fundamentally based around, you know, fixing your mana via lands. Like there's not rocks. And they also printed Armageddon. So like there's answers to the five color pile. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah <Geddon is. laughs> That's mythic rare. Yeah, enchant my land. Okay. Oh, get blow it up in this set. Yeah. That's good. Oh, Nobody has good. any fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I the problem is that the five color pile deck would play Geddon. Yeah. You just get ahead and then get them. You just rare. Ramp, ramp into some fatty and then get them. Now what? <laughs> okay, enough about this. <laughs> Let's talk about standard. Where there's some reasonable cards. We had well, uh, did you oh well, you didn't play magic, but Cam did. Uh when? Well, in the time since we recorded our last It's podcast. been a while, yeah. You um, played the most enjoyable format in Magic's perhaps truest. Oh yeah, I went and to play most Popper. noble format, Popper. Popper. I went to Popper is hype. How yeah. fun was it? How much fun did you have? Scale uh, one to ten. Well, I mean, uh, out of ten, I don't know. That's hard. I'd say six, seven, but it's also because I just like didn't really know what my cards do because yeah, I assumed that they can't be that complicated. They're commons, right? But they have a lot of words and they're on a different border, <laughs> and as aforementioned we're not good at reading what'd you play uh mono black <laughs> and easy. i had a corrupt in my hand no <laughs> yeah he didn't read corrupt and it just properly. didn't go through my mind because i'm so used to new templating that corrupt could i could target my opponent's face yeah. I, I just didn't even consider this <laughs> and so i was about to die and like corrupted, that's the only thing corrupt's good for corrupted my own creature because i was like i guess i have to gain life <laughs> and then i was sideboarding and i saw tendrils of corruption and i'm like why would they print this at instant for two mana less like the exact same card <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like oh so i went back and read original corrupt corrupt goes fast. yeah uh. games were a lot easier after that yeah <laughs> so you would have had more fun if you were this is just a the more you know infomercial because you would have had more fun if you knew how to read yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he's a master of mathematics not a master of reading Come yeah on. you know how hard it is to be a weeb when you can't read Numbers and English words are not the same. understand the Japanese. Wouldn't, wouldn't know. <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> Proud to say. Just not watching anime. So still, <laughs> even though I said I would watch that one, I don't even remember what it was. And it's <laughs> clearly not important. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, Popper's great. Well? Dude, Popper, no, I skipped it. I slept in. But uh, <laughs> Obviously. I was really excited to play. I was going to go play some, I think I was going to play Delver. I can't remember. Or I was going to play Tron. And if you want to play Popper, you can always go to the Wizard's Tower. They have it. Is it uh, monthly? Yeah, it's monthly, monthly events. Monthly Popper, no, that's no. why. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go to the next one, though. But I'm just not sure what I was going to play. So There was a large turnout. There was like 20 people. Dude, yeah, that oh. format's like actually growing. At a GP side event recently, there was like, a, didn't they post? There was like 180 people at like Seriously? a Popper event. Yeah, it was like a Jeez. nine round or an eight round some Popper event. Like Whoa. it was huge. Yeah, it's like. All the prices of Popper decks, though, on Moto have spiked. It sucks. They're like $100 now. No. They used to be like 20 bucks. Popper but, uh, has everything right about it that Standard has done wrong. All of the answers are better than all of the threats. And so it's about like planning, like interact, like planning your, what you're going to do and how you're going to answer your opponent's threats, like lining everything up. Yeah, it's awesome. Not just and like, like slamming things. And the most powerful things you can do are just two for ones. Like that's yeah. it. And that's why it's like so fun because all the best cards in Popper, all the decks, like when you think about it, all the decks are just two for ones. Like, um, I don't know, Mall Drifter is like the king of the format, right? Mm -hmm. Like, in some ways, not in every deck. Like, there was a time where I was in every deck, and it probably still should be. It's like, it's just God tier. But one of the best removal spells in Popper, as it's just turning into a Popper episode, but one of, the, one of the best removal spells in Popper is Chainer's Edict, right? Because it's two mana, they sack a creature, and then a seven mana flashback from a graveyard. It's just so good because it's just, you get two creatures out of it. Uh, like what else are like some of the popper uh, all stars like Frixian, um, Frixian Rager, Rager, right? Perhaps just, even Dusk Legion Zealot, right? Dusk Legion Zealot, like uh, all those cards are just two for ones. Like that's kind of what defines popper. Like the blue black control decks, like their common play pattern is they just mystical teachings for mystical teachings for mystical teachings so that right, they can just draw cards with the flashback back. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, well, they play like accumulated knowledge. Yeah, which are a hard card to get a hold of in paper these days. Um, it's, they reprinted it. It's in uh, M25. Oh, well, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Problem solved. Oh, well, that's sweet. I yeah. can't wait to play that card on paper. Um, so, yeah, that, like there's a, I don't know, like Tron. Uh, Tron's like a whole different beast in Popper. That, that deck is really sweet. Like, really, really sweet. I can get behind that. Yeah, well, like, you get to play, think about it. Like, Expedition Map is a common. Yeah. Like, all the, like, Ancient Stirrings is a common. Yeah. Like, all the kind of, like, 
you know, build your Tron pieces are commons. Yep. So it's quite easy for the deck to track down its pieces. Like chromatics are commons, like the yep. stars or a star and sphere or whatever are commons. Um, so it just plays all those pieces. And then to refill, it plays like uh, Mall Drifters. Like it's, five, it's a five color deck. It kills mm-hmm. you with Rolling Thunder, which is a fireball that can be spread around. I mean, so Pete made a version of it because um, it features like Mnemonic Wall and Ghostly Flicker. At least he was doing that. Yeah. Because you have so much mana, you can just go Ghostly oh, Flicker. No, that's, a that's a normal. Right. But like, he put in Dinrova Horrors. And he was flickering Dinrova Horror in his Mnemonic Wall every turn like three times, bouncing all my lands. That's pretty obnoxious. Oh, yeah, because Din Rovahor was reprinted as a common in yeah. Modern Masters 3. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. But, like, the traditional list would just kill you with Rolling Thunder. Um, What else? Oh, and they play Ulamok's Crusher, which I think Pete just doesn't play. <laughs> That's what he cut for the Din Rovahor. Yeah. I don't know. There are matchups where you definitely want that card. Yeah, sideboard it. Yeah. But, that, yeah, but Din Rovahor is probably better than Crusher. But Crusher's, like... What feels like Tron. That's why people like it. You know what that card is, right? Yeah. The 8 mana 8 8 or whatever. Yeah. That's Annihilator 2. <laughs> it's a common with Annihilator. It's nuts. <laughs> so good. <laughs> it's busted. But yeah, no, there's lots of cool decks. There's like, there's a list I played against when I used to play Popper like every single day, basically on Moto. There was this list I played against that played Silvok Lifestaff. And it was like this bug graveyard, but not. Fully committed graveyard reanimator list. I gotta find it somehow, man. It was wild. I've never seen it on like MTG Goldfish or anything. I've never seen the list, and I, I'm gonna like figure it out somehow. So if any listeners know <laughs> about the like black green weird dredge Silvok life staff deck, please contact me. <laughs> I need a- to, no, dude, the deck was so obnoxious. Like all I was trying to do was gain two life a turn. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and it eventually kill you with like a one one, dude. It was it was so sweet. I'm just, just surprised being, at how diverse Popper is. It's incredibly diverse and like like well, like Delver's probably still the best deck. Yeah, sure. Because I mean that deck plays Ponder, Preordain, Delver, Days. Gosh. <laughs> gosh, you gush. <laughs> uh like that the Delver deck is capable of beating many modern decks. And I haven't bothered testing it, but I have a theory that it would beat most modern decks, actually. You think so? Yeah, it plays like just completely busted cards. Before the Cloud of Fairies banning, I would say almost definitely. Hmm. When they banned Cloud of Fairies in Popper, that really hurt it. Um, but like, if it could play Cloud of Fairies into uh, what's it called? What's the counter spell fairy? The spell spell, spell starter sprite. sprite. Yeah, like when it could like in a one turn go like, uh, you know, spell starter sprite, yeah. Cloud of Fairies, spell starter sprite in the same turn and like untap their mana, like, and have a bunch of power on the board plus a flip Delver that turn. Like they're hitting you for five, and they countered your turn to play hmm. if they're on the play. Very good. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. Um, so that would be that would be most modern decks. They also play four counter spell, like just straight up blue, blue counter spell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is gonna beat a lot of modern decks. Yeah. Because like that card doesn't ex- right. So yeah, exactly. They have like pressure and temp. They play ponder, preordain, gush, days. Like days like, is way too yeah. good for modern. Like way too good. Like it would beat a lot of modern decks. The power level on in popper is actually quite high. We like, should test this theory. Yeah, but that's why it's sweet because like every powerful card you were just mentioning outside of Delver, they're all answers. They're all like yeah, they like tell, help tempo out your opponent. But it's the, all the answers are very powerful. Yeah, all the threats are terrible. We're talking about like Cloud of Fairies and spells that are spread as if they're busted. <laughs> right, exactly. So like <laughs> like Gray Merchant, the games like go longer. There's like interesting interaction. In mono black. Like, yeah, you're like oh yeah, I'm gonna go get you with these Gray Merchants because they're actually nuts in that deck. Oubliettes are like $50, though, which sucks. Ugh. Yeah, for a common, dude. Ouch. Yeah. But it's a scent. Well, sort of. You can play um, Faceless Butcher as a replacement, which is like what I'm doing for one of them because mm-hmm. Oubliettes are too much. Oh, I'm just never buying a, like, you know, an Oubliette for... To, to play, play Popper, Black. yeah. To play Popper. Like, yeah. That's just craziness. But yeah, no, the format's really sweet. I'm going to go play on the next one. We'll go again. But yeah. Did you have a good time? What did you play? Did you, didn't you say you played against like just a bunch of I played random against, stuff? I played against Boggles. Oh, yeah. That deck's obnoxious, actually. I thought it would be fine because I'm like, oh, I have a bunch of Edicts in my deck. But then he just went like Kalani Garden. Yeah, um, they have Colony Gardens. Like Tap up. it, cast something, play this Bounce Land, pick up my Colony Garden. Yep. And just had zero ones and I died. Yeah, because they just play a bunch of the Karu lands and they just yep. keep picking up Colony Garden over and over. That's actually why Burn could never beat Blue Black Control. 
in Pauper. Yeah, because they kept picking up a uh, Radiant Fountain, Fountain. A Radiant Fountain. <laughs> because, like, you play all the bounce lands, right, in blue-black, <laughs> but you also play four Radiant Fountain. <laughs> and you also play Dismal Backwater, the one that gains one life when it comes into play. Uh, so, like, Burn can't actually beat the blue-black control deck in Modern. It's hilarious. That's just, incredible. And you have that Talisman, the, like, Taps pristine for talisman, and make talisman them in. Yeah. no no it's taps for colors but oh, yeah. it's just every time you tap it you gain a life yeah Kurt busted so like Jeez. yeah they can't beat they can't beat the blue black deck it's really funny but burn otherwise like can beat some decks i think the deck actually sucks in popper played against boggles then i played against um like naya tokens naya like slash splinter twin tokens wait what so there's like it's like a white mana two three that when another creature enters, you can untap it. Oh, yeah, yeah, And then yeah, they yeah. enchant it with the thing that it can tap and make an elf. Village village messenger? Something like that. Yeah, village, yeah, okay, yeah. Village something, well. and then they put an enchantment on it, so you tap it, it makes an elf, it untaps it, you tap it, it makes an elf. Yeah. And they just do that on your end step and, and attack you with a bunch of elves. Yeah. Seems cool. Right, yeah, and otherwise, they just, it has played the soul sisters. Yeah, it makes yeah, a bunch yeah, of creatures. The yeah. yeah, okay, I've played against that. Uh, and then I played against... Yeah, like they have like affinity. a splinter twin combo and popper. Like, yeah. come on, bro. <laughs> it's really slow, but oh, yeah. The affinity deck sucks. Played against affinity. That deck then... actually sucks. I tried so many different versions of it when I played on Moto or like to try and make it good because I was like, all right, you can literally dump your hand on turn one mm -hmm. and like thought cast. That's got to be insane. And then it just turns out with like without cranial plating or arc bound ravager. Like, it, that's just, and frog mites like are just not good enough. There's playing Gear Seeker Serpent. Oh, maybe it's better now. Yeah. And yeah, it probably still sucked. Did you win? No. Oh, you suck. Got stuck on three lands and then two lands. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. What else you play against? And then I played against some guy's, like, homebrew red prowess deck. He put uh, madcap skills on a mage ring bully, <laughs> and then I edicted him. <laughs> he conceded. Got him. But <laughs> thought you're beating up the bruise with your net deck. Shame on you, kid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't my choice. You gave me the net deck. It was all I had. Yeah, I think I also had Delver together. I just couldn't find it. I couldn't like build any popper deck, obviously. I cast Wrench Mine against it at one point. He just bends two Madcap skills. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> so yeah, just a good two for one. See, yeah. another classic popper card, Wrench Mind. Feel bad about against Affinity though. Yeah, I boarded it out. Yeah, didn't matter. <laughs> you board that card out usually against Tron too, because like, yeah, they just have so many like they play stars prophetic and prisms yeah. and fights. Yeah, but actually, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe you don't actually because I. It was pretty good in the games I played against Pete, remember? Because I'd yeah. wait and get his like, whole hand. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Well, if they have like two cards left and they try and do like ghostly flicker stuff, they just have, they get like that turn to do it. Then they have to pitch, they have to pitch it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, ghostly flicker is actually busted in Popper. It's so good, man. Mnemonic wall, you flickering your mall drifter. You can actually, so you can actually evoke your mall drifter, right? And then oh, with the trigger it. on the stack flicker to it. sacrifice it, you can flicker it with ghostly flicker. So, if you have six mana, you can evoke your Mall Drifter, Ghostly Flicker, it, and your Mnemonic Wall to get back your Ghostly Flicker and keep your Mall Drifter around so it doesn't sacrifice from the evoke. That seems pretty good. So you keep your Ghostly Flicker in hand and draw four? Yeah. You draw four, keep your Ghostly Flicker. It's <sighs> pretty good six mana. Make That's two, a two. good six mana. <sighs> yeah. That's better than most Gear Hulks. Yeah. <laughs> draw four, <laughs> make a two, two. That's for six mana. That's really good. I draw five because you keep your. Uh, you keep your Flicker. Yeah. Yeah. Sign that. me up. Yeah. All right, let's talk about standard. All right, fine. Okay. <laughs> GP Metro. Now, see, now we're bombed. We're like, ah, but all this fun stuff you can do with the Mall Drifter. Man, standard's great right now. Yeah, okay. It is. It, it is, is, so is on the stuff. drive here. We we're also talking about how yeah. sweet it is right now. Taken down by Red Green Monsters. This deck is sweet. Rekindling Phoenix, Ronis, Glorybringer, Earthshaker Kenra. Love this deck. Other Kenra. Or the long Kenra. <laughs> the uh, Forgotten unplayed until now resilient Kenra that no one thought was winning a GP. It was just biding its time. Yeah, it was just resilient. Really it kind of, it popped up in a few yeah. green-white decks, right? Yeah, it was played yeah. at the Pro Tour actually in that yeah. green-white aggro deck that the, like some of the South American teams mm -hmm. played. Yeah, but yeah, this deck is gas. It's uh, really good. Dude, the Explore creatures are really starting to shine, which is cool to see, right? Like, the green decks in the top 32 and the top eight are just playing four copies of Merfolk Branch Walker, just like the winning mm -hmm. deck list. Um, and obviously, like, Jane Light Ranger, but we knew that card was good, you know? Yeah. Like, er everyone yeah. everyone knew. Like, whether it had a home or not, it didn't matter. It's just a value good mid-range card. Mm -hmm. But even Merfolk Branch Walker, you think, like, uh, it's, it's just a fine junky two-mana thing. But it's like, yeah, but that spot on the curve, being able to fix your draws, mm -hmm. 
get a land for you is huge. Like it's just so. It's what standard two drops need to be able to do. I don't know that like, they're good late and early. Mm-hmm. Is it like? Is it better than a card like Channeler Initiate? Uh, that card's also a card though that's good early and late. Yeah. Right. Like later, it's just fine. It's a two mana three four. Yeah, mm-hmm. Channeler Initiate might be better. I mean, no, it's definitely not better. It doesn't let you control your. It yeah, it doesn't control. help you control your draws. Yeah, because this comes with a scry. Like this having scrying a, is very good. A scry is just way better. And even in his winner's interview, he was talking about how like with like playing both Kenras, Resilient and Earthshaker, made the scries from um, his eight explore creatures more in more like more like draws. Yeah. Because oh, you, you can bin them. Right. You, yeah. He's like, you just always bin the Kenras and then play them later for six. Yeah. Yeah. I watched him. I watched him do that in the finals. So then you're like, you know, you're drawing your land drops you need. You're drawing your more powerful cards. Like, and you're just always drawing a card off of it anyway. Right. right? Every time you hit a Kenra, you, you draw a card. So. Right. Yeah. You get a virtual card advantage out of it. Yeah. Even like you can bin survive, like struggle to survive against control decks where you just want the struggle side. Or this, you just want the survive side, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, to take away their graveyard. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's I, a card I thought was like pretty borderline standard playable. I actually played it in standard uh, at one point when I was playing the uh, Teamer Energy deck, mm-hmm. yeah, the I more controlly that. version. Remember, because I was playing Gear Hulks mm-hmm. before the stupid worlds and Huey won. Remember, I was playing Gear, Gear Hulks. I yeah, played yeah. against you, and I Gear Hulked you, and you're like, "What the?" Is that like <laughs> Gear Hulk? You, I was like, "No, nah, I think this is actually a good build." Obviously, I was right, but I all yeah, I had struggled surviving that deck because mm-hmm. I thought that that card plus Gear Hulk, but just that card in general was actually like yeah, pretty well, close to standard playable. You know, the deck the deck needs that kind of card because you need to be able to just interact to- with gift decks. You need to be able to interact with Scarab God decks. Yeah, it's not just that, but also it's just like in red green there is not hard removal. Yeah, like there isn't just hard removal in red green. It's I think it's the only like I mean yeah. this isn't even hard removal, but. It's the best you're going to get. Because this deck doesn't have the luxury of playing Harness Lightning. It's not playing an energy package of any sort. Right. Like, this is the best it's going to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, you you don't have exile effects for Scarab God. So, you need to be able to play something that will help you just not care about it. Yeah. Um, what, I, what other options are there for hard removal? We could play four Ronus and some Pounces. <laughs> <laughs> get you. <laughs> Solved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then your opponent Vraska condemns Uronis says you try and bounce and you just uh, lose the game on the spot. Well, I mean, you knew what you were signing up for playing red green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think this deck is really cool and I'm not surprised that it won the, the tournament. It's just really proactive. Like yeah. um and especially, you know, we've said it all the time, like in a unknown metagame, like being proactive is often a good idea. Although having said that, you know, like two blue black control lists were in the top eight. Yep. But yeah, I mean, nevertheless, like it's important to be proactive. But like this, the thing is with like normally people have been trying out like red green decks. And I think until the explore cards kind of came into being, it wasn't really viable because like the red green decks are always just sort of like inconsistent and junky. Yeah. But now this seems like way more. Well, and you have a lot more resilient (laughs) threats. Like you have rekindling Phoenix. You have resilient. Well, here's a thought. Like it's good because it's proactive, but. To call back to like a topic we talked about in the past, it also like it kind of has the ability to pivot built into it game one because yeah, it's proactive, but your proactive cards have reactive options built into them. Once you realize what matchup you're playing, which you know you should be able to do by turn three, yes, your Jade Light Ranger is a proactive play, and its explore triggers allow you to react to your opponent. So it's just doing both at the same time. Like mm-hmm. Glorybringer is a very proactive card, but it allows you to react to what your opponent's doing based on where you exert. Right, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's like I, that's. I guess that's kind of what I'm getting at in the sense that, like, yeah, normally you don't see red green decks that are capable of playing at multiple angles and like yeah. creating small incremental advantages and kind of grinding out games. Like, but this deck is probably capable of that, which yeah. is unusual well, for red green decks. What's cool about this deck is it can play an aggro strategy or it can go long and go over opponents. Right, you can slide yeah. under and you can go over just because of the like inherent nature of your cards, like the Kenras. They're like it's very Earthshaker Kenra, obviously very aggressive card. Also comes into play later on turn six. Yeah, especially if you bend it off the know. Explorer. Yeah, it's a uh, stack's definitely very powerful and it's uh, a gold medalist in both high jump and limbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's cool. Like, um, 
the removal package of four of braids I think is good too because like I think this deck probably recognizes his struggles actually against things like God Pharaoh's Gift. Yeah. I think this is one of those like without, you know, if you were to just play four Harness Lightning. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, you wouldn't obviously because no. you're not playing energy, but I think that like you need the four of braids mm -hmm. because this is probably a deck that never wants to play against God Pharaoh's Gift. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's also what I mentioned earlier with the struggle to survive. So you need to. Yeah. You need to be able to deal with it. Yeah. Um, Man, also of note, so many magma sprays in this tournament in the main decks. Yeah. Like everywhere. Mono people red just, and Mardu's real deck, man. Well, yeah, that's why there's no mono red in the top eight. Yeah. None. Because I mean, people just came packing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had one uh Mardu deck slip yeah, in. It was like the only like kind yeah. of traditional aggro deck. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mardu obviously still very good. Um The two two split here of Hazaret and Rekindling Phoenix is interesting, which I was wondering, like, I was curious how that would end up because Phoenix, like, they're both very good, but they're competing for the four slot. I feel like Hazard is probably better. I mean, Mardu, I think, doesn't have the ability. I mean, so it can dump its hand as fast as Mono Red, but it doesn't have burn spells that it can just throw out early if it needs to. Like, it's going to be stuck within a braid waiting for a target or an unlicensed disintegration waiting uh, for a target yeah, or like multiple hearts in hand. That's a good point. And so your Hazards are not as easy to turn on as they are in Mono Red. Right, whereas like Rekindling Phoenix is just an aggressive. Right, you just play it whenever. Damage dealer, yeah. 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 No. That's a good point. I didn't think about it like that. Like just the makeup of the deck in general makes it so. Like normally, you just, like in Mono Red, obviously, this isn't even a question, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just like, no, you're just playing Hazards because yeah, you exactly. just dump your hand and smash. Yeah, if you have shocks or something in hand, it's all right, fine. My turn three, I'll just shock your face, strike you. Play Hazard. Play Hazard. Yeah, here you can't really do that. Yeah. I also love that uh, a lot of these decks are starting to adopt Profane Procession as a sideboard card. Or even we're seeing it in main decks a lot too on Moto, just because oh, yeah. like Scarab God decks can't beat that card. Yep. Mm. So good. Yeah, like basically any any of the decks that are doing well have an answer to Rekindling Phoenix, Scarab God. They're all exile effects. They're mm. all cards that are like, just get that thing out of here. Yeah. You know, even Magma Spray, like mm -hmm. they're all cards that just are <laughs> harder removal. <laughs> <laughs> Think about how much of a nightmare a card like that is for like blue black control, even. Oh, yeah. It's an enchantment. Blue black yeah. can't remove it. They can't do anything. Like, how do they win through that card? You what? You take, uh, if it resolves. Yeah. They, if you stick it, what? You take their first Gear Hulk. Then well, yeah. You, Hulk, just, then you, just can't it, you just can't let it resolve. You have to censor their profanity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. I'll give you that one. But yeah, so aside from those decks, we saw Salt Eye Constrictor. Two didn't I say control. that that card would be good? Three Which Trixus one? decks. Procession. Oh, I yeah. think I did in Standard, and you guys laughed at me. It's just very slow. Yeah, but like I said, I, yeah, I remember saying, and you were like, no way. And I was like, no, nah, I think it might actually be like, there are, have been slower cards that have seen success in Standard. Yeah. You guys said I, I don't remember that. saying that, which means it doesn't mean I was wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Oh, yeah, Tendrum top aided too, yeah. We saw... I mean, the Grixis energy decks are all kind of... So there was three of them Yeah, in the top eight. And that's kind of like expected. I'm actually impressed it was only three. And I think that speaks volumes to the kind of like healthy state that Standard is in and mm -hmm. that it didn't win. Because like that deck is obviously good, and but it's also like probably... I didn't look at the numbers, but I bet it was wildly overrepresented. Yeah. I, like I bet it was played by most people. Yeah. It was almost certainly the most popular deck. It's also seemingly the most flexible deck. Like, whatever you thought the meta would be, you can bring a version of Grixis Energy to attack that meta. So, like, I mean, we, it's not surprising yeah, people We're still not seeing, it. like, a consistent, like, all the Grixis Energy decks you see are all different. There's never like a this is the best version of yeah, this, this deck. Yeah, this is just the version. Yeah, yeah, like we're seeing decks playing. We're seeing versions playing Gaunti. We're seeing versions playing Champion of Wits. We're seeing versions playing Liliana. Like it's they're kind of all over the place. Some are a lot more controlled. If, like, if the mana, yeah, yeah. If your mana can support it, I think you. I think Gaunti is like uh, sort of like one of my auto includes as a mid range like blue black deck. I think uh, the card is like it's always been a favorite of mine though. Like I used to even when we were playing black or Esper tokens, I used to board into Gaunties. Right. Like I have no hesitation playing it in my sideboard, and it's always kind of at the front of my sideboard, but it's just so bad against red and Mardu. 
Yeah, it's not great. It's that not like great. I am not sure if I want it main. Um, because you need all the edges you can get against them game one, because like you have to win game two and three. That's true. Um yeah, that's kind of an issue, but at the same time, like it depends how much red you expect. Yeah, exactly. If you don't expect like, a if, lot of it, then if start. you like like we just said, right, we expected like the Grixis deck to be the most played. Well then like Gaunti's insane. Yeah, I agree. Gaunti's just completely nuts. I guess though you would everyone also expected a lot of mono red, and mono red probably did show up at this GP and then just get smashed. Because everyone was playing yeah, like I'm, three to four Magma Sprays main. Mm -hmm. Like people just had it out for mono red. Like I mean, there was an okay amount of mono red and like black red decks in the top 32, but still. Not like, a lot. Not what we're used heavily, to seeing. Heavily outweighed by like the blue black decks, the Grixis decks. Like look at this Grixis list you have on screen. Four Magma Spray, four Vraska's Contempt. Yeah, seems good. Yeah, good luck, mono red. Yeah, like Magma Spray early stuff, Vraska's Contempt, your hazard. Get off my board, you know? Yeah. Like. <laughs> Mono Red is not beating this. Well, yeah, I mean, all the all the like blue black decks, the Grixis decks have all adopted, you know, the four Vraska's contempts. Um, you have to because you need XL effects and all the other cards yeah. suck. Yeah, Vraska's contempt isn't even like that good, but it's, it's great. safe. It feels like the hero's downfall of this format. And yeah, hero's downfall is like actually busted. Yeah, that yeah, card but, was very good, but it was but just hero's the go-to black was, removal like, that was four of, four of in every. Yeah. Black deck, pretty much. But it was like not clog. It wasn't even a yeah. question. Yeah. Well, actually, at the Pro Tour that it was debuted, it wasn't a four of in most. And then people figured it out. Yeah. Um, people were. Which is what happened with this card at the beginning of the standard format. For it wasn't a four of in every deck. You would see two copies of third in the side. Board. Well, yeah. one in the board. Yeah. And everyone's like, wait, we'll put three in the main. I'm like, ah, we're just, we're going to put all four because this card's busted. It's, just, well, the card's not busted. It's just that, like, all the permanence well, you have to answer. Like, it's, very, very good in the format as it currently exists. Yeah, like the card on its face is actually like not great. Like its power level's not that high. It's just that the problem is it answers the cards whose power levels are insanely high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cards it needs to answer all cost four or more and require it to be answered. So like it's not a tempo loss. It Like the life gain is not irrelevant against the decks playing these threats like Hazret decks. Right, like Hazret, Chandra, Scarab God. Yeah, these are the cards that it answers, so you're not down on mana, right? Like, it's just that there's nothing else that answers those cards. Mm -hmm. So, like, if it wasn't for the stupid return to hand or like indestructible clauses, like, Braska's Contempt would never see play. Well, yeah. yeah, definitely not. Like, it's just like, well, there's no choice. Like, you're mm -hmm. just stuck. If you yeah. don't answer those cards, you can't win. I mean, its closest comparison that we've seen in the recent past is uh, Utter End. And yeah, that card saw very little play. Yeah, it was like a one or two of, like maybe some in the sideboard for people as like an absent control card, like to answer things. But uh, the answers in that format were absurd. So yeah, exactly. No I mean, reason. there was also four thought seasons in that format. I mean, like, there, in, in Utter End deck. was in cons, right? Yeah, but yeah. didn't that share like Theros cons was a format at one point? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm just cracking up because I remembered a game that got played at the Tower where. It was like Mardu, a Mardu Green Mirror oh, or yeah, something. And one person died to multiple shambling vents because they just had like three utter ends in hand. <laughs> it says non-land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is an issue. Oh, of note though, another similar card that has won a Pro Tour. And I was like, holy crap, look at these deck lists. Um, the, the Theros Pro Tour that Chapin won, he was playing, I think, man, I could be wrong and I almost want to double check, but I'm pretty sure he was playing three to four copies of Silence the Believers. Do you remember that card? I do remember that card. Yeah, dude. It it's never like saw a bunch play. Of stuff and you have to... It, those old cards from Theros slash Born of the Gods. I think it might have been Pro Tour Born of the Gods then. But yeah. Uh, was like... Well, I can't remember the mechanic, but you can like pay more and it has like extra effect. What was that mechanic called? Not Escalade. Pro Tour Not Journey yeah. into Nyx. Yeah, Pro Tour Journey into Nyx. My bad. Um, yeah. Where's this deck list? Right here. Yeah, dude. Four Silence, Silence the Believers, Believers, Four Heroes Downfall, Strive. Yeah. Strive. That's what it was called. Basically, just escalate. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, he's playing four copies of this card. Yep. Isn't that nuts? Yep. But yeah, this is like kind of Raska's contempt dish, I guess. Not really, but it also exiles all the auras attached to them, which was relevant in this format it because was of hugely the style. relevant. Yeah. At this pro tour, and never again, because <laughs> everybody stopped playing those decks after this format. Yeah. And when was Boon Seder popular? That card was sweet. Uh, never, because Life Bane Zombie was like. An issue. And no, it rotated. Like I know, Life Bane Zombie but rotated. Then, no, then. Boon Seder was popular in this Pro Tour. It was this one. And then, yeah. okay. But then also, people realized that like 
that card just didn't do anything compared to like and all the command other cards. Yeah, like there's a bunch of funny things that happen, but man, look at the list that Reed Duke and everyone played at this Pro Tour. It is Garbo. Four Prognostic Sphinx, dude. I don't even know what that card does. Yeah, oh yeah, no, of course you don't. Five mana, three, five, discard a card. Dude, they played three Silence Sanctuary. the Believers too. You know, it's actually like funny. Dumbledore. So like, I just, the reason I thought of this is because, dude, his list is horrible. Holy jeez. This is maybe one of the worst decks to ever top eight a Pro Tour. He's also playing Four Silence Believer. Dude, he's playing Psychic Intrusion Main and he oh top eight it. This Pro Tour was a train wreck. But anyway, the reason I thought about it is because I was like, man, Vraska's attempt to see a lot of play. But yeah, I remember when it came out, everybody was like, oh, it's not that good. And it's because we had had Heroes Downfall, a completely busted card, like a completely insane card. Um, and then, every, you know, this came out and everyone's like, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. But I was like, there was a card and it was, it was Silence of Believers. When that card came out, everyone was like, wow, this card's busted. And everyone at the Pro Tour played it. It was in like every top eight list that played black, like every like four copies. And no one said four was too expensive. And then after this Pro Tour, no one played it again. Um, but funny enough, Braska's Contempts had the op- exact opposite kind of like shelf life or experience. Mm-hmm. And it's it, Reduke, there was two copies of that Reduke stack. In yeah, this I know. Copy. They're on the same team. Oh. Dude, it's wild. Well, he plays one Reaper of the Wilds. And this guy plays two, but... Man, they're playing a black deck and no thought sees in their main deck. Oh, I'm aware. Oh, yeah. That's what Jeez. I'm saying because people just like start realizing that you just play four thought sees and call it a day, obviously. Man. But what a world. Reed Duke didn't play like thought, four thought sees main. <laughs> Unheard of. Unbelievable. Man. Um, but yeah. It's like... You Chapin know, did kind of nail it. Um, I mean, his is the closest to what ended up being... 12 tap lands. Yeah, his is actually the closest list and what ended up being the best decks in the format. Yeah. His was the closest. Um, in yeah, that he played kinda... Thoughtseize his main, yeah. a million Elspaths, and a million Heroes Downfalls. Like he, he was, and um, all the Scrylands he could. Like he was the closest. Anyone the Scrylands were sweet. Yeah, they were wild. But anyway, like the format of removal spells, like it's interesting. Like as long as the format isn't like, very fast, which now it's slowed down, like mm-hmm. apart from you know, mono red, which is like good that there's a mono red deck in the format, but everything else is kind of like a slug fest now, it feels like in standard, which is cool. Like, as long as you can answer your scarab gods, like mm-hmm. you just have to have, like, and Cam was going to talk about this, like, I guess now is fine, but like, yeah, we can use this to transition, yeah, like, yeah, to go for it. Yeah, so for the past few weeks, we've sort of had a topic in mind that because of Pro Tours or whatever else was going on, we never quite got to. And this was the idea of um, having a game plan in mind. <laughs> we couldn't enact our game plan. Yeah, we had a game plan that we couldn't we couldn't stick to, but now, now we're getting to it on the week that we record late. Um, and it's having a game plan in mind of how you are going to win, you know, that particular game and using it to inform all of your decisions so that you don't, have to tank as long on each turn so that you know which threats to save, which answers for, so that you know which answers to wait for them to spend before you play certain threats. Like just, it, just like a bullet, like a couple bullet points of this is how I want this game to go, so that you can make all your decisions towards that uh, in like a unified manner. Because when you don't have a game plan like this, you will find yourself using a card on something you think is important, and then finding out you know a turn or, or a half a turn or you know, however much later that you should have saved that because you would have actually liked to answer, you know, threat A with answer B and have your first answer still around for something else. Right, like you, Vrask is contempted, oh, I don't know, a heart of Kirin, you know, like a later in the game when you have fatal pushes in your deck still. Yeah, because and you then, didn't want to take four. And because you didn't want to take four and low. then the next turn they play Scarab God or, you know, Hazard or whatever and now you have a fatal push and you can't do anything. Right. Like um, like an example that kind of sparked all of this is that uh, I think this was at the Open or something. I was, I was playing a game against Blue-White Cycling and I cast a Whirler Virtuoso and my opponent thought for a bit and I, I tapped low for this and they thought for a bit and then they cast Supreme Will on it for Mana Leak. And I was like, okay, it gets countered. And then they untapped and drew, thought for a bit, like cycled a card and then you know kind of shrugged and said, oh, fumigate you. Because like their game plan, what they like, ideally they would have known that their game plan was: I'm going to answer his small creatures with a fumigate, 
and use supreme will to either fight over his counter magic or fight over uh, Scarab God. And so then I have a purpose for each of these cards and I won't accidentally like mix these up. Yeah. I don't need to use it on the Whirler Virtuoso if I'm going to fumigate. Yeah, in that situation, he essentially just discarded it. Right, exactly. For no reason. And you could have used the Supreme Will to make sure the fumigate resolves. Like, like but he yeah. actually just, yeah, Alex is right. Like, yeah, yeah. That, you just when you make that play, you've actually just discarded and spent mana for doing that to, for nothing. And so like, it's a very egregious example, but like it stands, like it's a good example of Countering Roller Voucher also makes sense sometimes because, you know, I had a lot of energy. He probably doesn't, he can't beat a lot of Thopters without a Fumigate. Like, but if your plan is to Fumigate me, then like, you just need to keep in mind how you're going to answer each threat and not use other answers because like you need them for something else. That's another part of your game plan. And that's what we're seeing in all these standard lists is that standard is very diverse and you can do pretty much whatever you want. If some of your bullet points in your game plan are Here's how I'm going to answer Scarab God, Hazaret, Rekindling Phoenix, etc. Right, like pull up, can you pull up Ari Lux's? Like you already have it up basically, I think. Like his list, um, at, he got 12th at Grand Prix Memphis this last weekend, you know, and his list looks like wild, kind of, you're like, wow, he's playing Naya Monsters. Like that's not something I thought would get 12th place at a GP. Like, uh, and I'm pretty sure the attendance wasn't huge. And so he was like close to the kind of like, I, you know, he might have gone like X two one and missed. He probably like was super close. Um, but you know, if, if you would think that this deck, like from the name alone, wouldn't have much, but it has exactly what Cam's talking about. It's playing a, to a Johnny Unyielding, right? Which at first I had to ask. I'm like, what does that card do? And then yeah, we realized and everyone forgot about it. Everyone forgot about it. And then I realized, like, oh, it exiles. It sorts the posture as a creature. Like, yeah. it, it, oh my god, it exiles in Naya colors, like in green-white. In green-white... And it can do it twice. Right, it can do it twice. In green-white, there's an answer to Rekindling Phoenix and Scarab God. And Hazoret. And, and Hazoret, yeah. like in a, in a Planeswalker. That's insane. Like, You know, so he had a game plan of like, okay, these are for this. He's also playing like four Magma Spray main. Mm-hmm. You know, like this is the thing. But then he can do whatever he wants. Otherwise, like it doesn't matter. He's playing Thopter Arrest, Cast yeah. Out. I think like Ixalan's Bindings in the board. You know, like he has a plan for like everything he's going to be against. Yeah, he guess. has a like, he has a plan for the two best cards in the format. Right, like it's yeah. safe. Uh, so he can kind of do anything else. Like the color combination doesn't matter really because he has a game plan for answering the things that matter. And then he has like his creatures that win the game, and that's like his other game plan. So. So yeah, it's just like an interesting kind of state that standards in in that how dominated it is by, you know, Scarab God and Rekindling Phoenix really. And like I and didn't hazard. didn't see many, many of his games on camera, but like Arilax is pretty good and very good player. As prob- like I really hope that he did this so that I, I sound smart, but probably as an example or an illustration of this like playing with the game plan, he may have in a you know panicking situations used a magma spray plus another removal to exile a scarab god like that is something you can do but he's there's probably also times where like he's magma sp- like snap magma sprays glint sleeve siphoners or uses those removal spells not on scarab god knowing that he can explore into his ajani to answer the scarab god like right because he's playing jade light ranger right, right exactly so. And so, right, like, you put answers in your deck because you know you'll get them eventually. <laughs> right. And so, like, I don't need to waste these two cards on this Scarab God because I have a plan of how I'm going to answer this. And so, I can use these cards to get rid of his threats that I put them in my deck to answer. So, right. I mean, like, if you weren't going to draw relevant things, you were going to lose anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. This uh, kind of goes back to that patience, our patience episode. But this is more like, so you're being patient, but what are you waiting for? Well, you're waiting for, like, your deck to function normally right your game plan exactly <laughs> but like your game plan is a bunch of if thens and you're not just like endlessly patient you're patient until oh here's the card that i here's the card in the scenario that i planned for now i don't need to be patient anymore now i can use it right yeah of course yeah i think this is like one of the kind of things where i always say to people I'm like you don't need to have played a deck like you i always get mad when people are like oh it's my first time playing the deck and i think this kind of relates to like that saying i don't know if like this is a common sort of like thing other people in other magic communities here but like you'll always i always like notice it when someone's like playing and they play like really sloppily or whatever and they'll be like it's my first time playing the deck and i'm like right but like playing the deck doesn't like that's not what you're saying what you're saying is like you've never thought about the interactions in the deck and what the cards do right that's just i sat down to play without a game plan like that's like the equivalent of like producing some charred chocolatey mess 
in a pan and being like, ah, oh, it's my first time baking a cake, but I didn't look up ingredients. I didn't look up a recipe. I just, put I just cocoa powder. And I like, just thought of some things that might go in a cake. And yeah, I like what, do you, what, do you, what do you want? This I like is, that analogy. Yeah, this, like this is my best guy. effort, man. It's first time baking. Yeah, it's my first time baking. Yeah, right. yeah that's there's what so it, many resources out there, right? So that you like, can like plan what you need to do to successfully like listen to this podcast, have a good cake, <laughs> or a good game. Like, <laughs> right? No, but I'm saying like you know I, I don't need to play this deck. Cake comes to, out a bit salty. <laughs> 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 just like the SNG's cookie. <laughs> but uh, like, I don't need to play like Ari Lax's like Naya Monsters list to understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Because I can look at it and go, okay, what's it trying to do? What's it, you know, but that, a lot of that is because we, you know, saw the list before we started recording and we talked about it and talked about what it's doing and why it's important and how it's kind of has its game plan. And sure, from talking about magic or thinking about magic in this way, that's helped me as a player. But like, yeah, this was a funny kind of like pet peeve for me when people are like, it's my first time playing the deck. I'm like, well, did you think about like what's in the deck and the interactions that, you know, could come up? Because that's all you really need to do. You don't yeah. need reps with a deck. Mm-hmm. Instead, what you need to do is think about exactly what we're saying. Like, what is this deck's plan? Like, how does yeah. it answer what's, answer what's going on in the meta? Like, is it well positioned? Like, yada, yada, yada. And outside of like the surface level, like, I need this card for this answer, or I need this answer for this card. There's also like your game plan of just in general, like, am I going to win um, by locking up the game and then killing them with a the gear hulk? Or like, am I going to win by pushing through damage? And if you have these sort of like um, second level goals in mind, this helps you inform like, which creatures am I attacking with? Am I chump attacking? Am I not? Am I trying to double block? Am I not? Am I, how am I exploring? Like, what cards are important? And it just like, it's it's slow play medication. Yeah, yeah. That's that's I guess kind of what I'm getting at with like the it's my first time yeah. baking. It's like yeah. going to deck is like it, because you often hear that as an excuse for playing very slowly, and it's like well, yeah, but you should you shouldn't have to play slowly. Like this should be something like you can just play quickly because you know what you're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Unless it's obviously like a complex system because there are always exceptions to rules about your game plan. And yeah, yada yada. But like I mean, if we're talking case. about older formats like Legacy, sure. But a yeah. format like standard, that's eh, how complicated can it be. It's how many decisions are you making in a turn realistically? You're taking up this Johnny unyielding or taking it down. Holy crap, that card's actually probably busted in standard right now. Like, read that card, man. It's so good in standard right now, probably. Because that was kind of like one of the problems with this like dumb mid range deck he's playing is like, ugh, like what if you run out of fuel? It's like, I mean, did you read a Johnny unyielding? Start yielding? drawing cards. Or yeah. yeah, Chandra near Johnny's. Yeah. Yeah, that card's like pretty sweet if. And only if you expect to play against a bunch of like rekindling phoenixes and scarab gods, which you should. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, this deck is pretty much just the deck that won the event. Just you're not playing Kenra's, you're a little less you're aggressive. S- slower. Yeah. You're just a kind of Naya control. Yeah. Weird, you know, like But you're you're shoring up like You're just whereas, a Naya it's a Naya Planeswalker deck, man. It's a Naya mid range planeswalker deck. Yeah. That was Chandra like, and Johnny. Whereas your red green deck can't answer cards like Hazret, you just try and go over Hazret, where yeah. this deck can actually just answer it. But it can also out. aggressive, like this is a deck that's playing again, like four Merfolk Branch Walker, four Jade Light, you know? Like, yeah. It's pretty yeah. sweet. I'm, I don't know, I'm about it. I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I think this deck's sweet. The other kind of breakout deck, I think that had like a unique game plan on this top 32 was the Blue Black deck, right? Like they obviously came The Blue the, Black Midrange deck, yeah. yeah That's they, they uh, Brad Nelson and company. The whole up. like Virginia squad or whatever, they like, you know, the Star City Games people, they all showed up with this deck. Like yeah. Corey Baumeister got 11th. They're like all three of them placed in the top 32 that were like, you know, mm-hmm. you think of like... Yeah, you're, you're, like, you're basically just a Grixix deck except you're not playing any of the red removal spells. You're playing, you're not playing obviously the red cards, but uh, you're playing cards like Gifted Aetherborn, you're playing Champion of Wits, uh, Gear Hulks, Charter Chorus. Yeah. This deck is like, sorry, this deck's like the same in the same thing or in the same vein, though. Also has a game plan to deal with like the two major threats in the format in that it played answers to Mono Red, right? Like early answers, uh, ways to stop aggression in Walking Ballista, which is what that's there for, right? Like in some ways. Because mm-hmm. at first, I was, yeah, same thing. You both, we both, you were like, I don't know about the Walking Ballistas. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know, right? Like it doesn't seem like it fits well. It's probably like their best answer in some ways to two for one and one already occasionally. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then they have fatal pushes, and then they have the full like Braska's contempt gaunty for the mid range plans. Like this is a deck that is out there to beat like exactly two kind of distinct issues, which is uh, the hyper like the mono red decks, and then decks that play Scarab Gun and Rekindling Phoenix. 
this deck is actually, it sort of solves the issue of, it has an interesting take on solving the issue of you can't be entirely reactive in standard. And so it's like, level one game plan is, yeah, we have all these answers against the things we need to kill. And then it's like, take on this not being reactive thing. It's like level two is, and we're going to play Supreme Will, Champion of Wits, Chart of Course, to always find the answer we need for the matchup. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Champion of Wits is like, I, man, it's probably really good like, in the stack. It's a lot of one and two ofs outside of like the important four ofs, but it, the answers are kind of scattered all over. And then you've got these like filtering cards pulling it all together. Yeah. Also, so, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So the plan is just identify what my opponent is doing and then find my answer. Spake, yeah. Spend a turn finding that answer and then answer it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And then like, you know, it, that, those kind of, this kind of deck is also, um, very modular in its ability to sideboard, you know, in games two and three. It's easy to know which cards to take out. Yeah. Right? Like, this is a deck where you're like, okay, take this out in this matchup and bring this in because you know exactly the cards you were looking for and the ones that you have in your main deck that aren't for that matchup, you know, because that's why Charter Course and Champion Wits are there. You just take them out. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that's actually an interesting thing, though, like as far as game plan for sideboarding, though. Like, would you board out Champion or some of your filtering then? Because <laughs> I, did, I did watch them concede a few games because their opponent uh, resurrected their Champion with Scare of God. And in response to the, like, I'm going to draw for a discard too. They're like, no, no, that's fine. And they just conceded. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> Champion of Wits actually like, if there are a lot of Scarab Gods, you got to be careful. Yeah. Because although like on the other side, like Champion of Wits on the front end is so underwhelming in my opinion. Like the three mana side is so, so underwhelming. Mm -hmm. But all, all three of us on this podcast have hard cast the backside. Like, oh, it's nuts. And it just feels unbeatable. Yeah, we've I all pay. done it because we've, well, we've done it with anointed processions in play, but I've done it. We've all also done it just, you know, yeah. as a vanilla, a vanilla quote unquote seven mana four four that draws four cards mm -hmm. and discards two, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it feels so unbelievably powerful paying seven for a four four that sees four cards. Like that feels insane. I did it in a few pre releases. That's yeah, it's, out. Just, it's insane. And, like on the front, yeah, on the front side though, that's the issue. The front side of champion is just so bad. Yeah. yeah. But man, the back side is wild. If there was a way to consistently just bin it, I, you know. You can use champion of wits to bin it. No. No. The other copies. <laughs> no, no, no. You use Merfolk, Branch Walker, and Jade Light Ranger to always explore it into the graveyard. Yeah, this was the idea of Pete had. decks. Well, that's exactly what the red green deck was doing. It's right. just exploring they just eternalized creatures into the graveyard. Yeah, but we should do it with Champion because it's way better to fly it back. I mean, it feels better. It's probably not actually better in standard, but it feels better because <laughs> you get to draw cards. Yeah. Um, this is just like so typical of, well, at least Adam's deck building strategy and mine as well is like, we see some like sweet like thing that an aggro deck's doing and we're like, what if we did that but dirtier and it drew cards? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'm about that life. Wow, Virgil's Gear Hulk. What if it was slower and drew cards and they were just playing torrential control? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That happens a lot actually. <laughs> like in our house. Oh yeah. <laughs> we're like, man, look at this sweet aggro deck. Like, what if we added four charter cards? Chart, of course, like <laughs> took out the lightning strikes, like most of the creatures. <laughs> put in more, put in some glamours. Deck probably be busted. Yeah, that's what we do with Teamer. We're like, oh, this Teamer deck seems pretty good. What if it was slower and drew cards? <laughs> yeah, we're like, maybe we should cut these guys and add glimmers. <laughs> well, if we're playing Gearhawks, we need some more instants. Yeah, uh, I gotta put some glimmers. Seems legit. Yeah, one worlds. <laughs> we weren't wrong. Solved it. But uh, yeah, anyway, like the, the blue black deck is really sweet. Man, standard is so, yeah, it's interesting because, like, we kind of say, oh, standard's really diverse and has all these directions you can go. But at the same time, it's like kind of stale in the sense of what you need to play, like what you're required to play. Yeah, there's it's still like, yeah, you have to answer certain things. Like, you have to or you will well, die. Mm -hmm. You have to either be able to answer them or ignore them. Yeah. Yeah. I still think there's like, because everyone's going to like defaulting to Vraska's attempt, which or Vraska's contempt, which like makes sense. But even that nihilist, like there, there are white answers. Like white is, I feel, very underexplored in standard. I agree, but it's funny at this GP you saw more, right? We saw Thopterus, multiple copies of Thopterus across separate decks, right? So in like the top thirty-two, That's cast out Thopterus, a Johnny binding, like, Ixalan's binding. Like there's probably a lot of decks that are splashing white or using like base white that just haven't been explored yet. Well, see, now that I think, in some ways, maybe the metagame isn't as wide open as we say, right? It's it's more actually like, 
you like, oh, no, you already said it, which is, you know, you can play whatever you want so long as you yeah. are capable of answering, Alex said too, like yeah. of answering these two or three best cards. So yeah, there's probably actually a lot of room in some ways for exploration of, uh, deck building of like what you can mm -hmm. play so long as you you know there are certain limitations on the format you know you, if you answer these cards you can otherwise play whatever you want yeah I agree I think you can kind of get away with that yeah it makes sense because if you can't answer a scare god the game is over yeah yep you have to answer that card. Or you have you to have are. something in mind to answer it and you can't just it. let it run rampant or you will lose that game yeah if you just think like ah, I'll just ignore it I mean you <laughs> Yeah, I mean the that's only that's not a card you get to ignore. The no. only deck that tries to ignore it is mono red. Yeah, exactly. But, but like, even otherwise, not... Scarab God is like drunk up in your kitchen, slamming your cupboards, <laughs> like just <laughs> yeah. make it, make it a racket. Like it, that Making, card gets in your face. Just baking yeah. a bad cake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that card is all about bad cakes because like he <laughs> doesn't know. It just brings back whatever. Yeah, <laughs> first time, first time resurrecting. So I get the right one, but. Like because you can't ignore that card; it is in your face. Like yeah. it will, it will take over the game. But even red, like you said, red tries to ignore it. But red, like, ignores it by not ignoring it. Like red will play. I mean, it's already an aggressive deck, but they will chump attack. They will do everything they can to put themselves in a position so that if you cast Scarab God, they have enough damage to kill you. Like, yeah, they can like, pretty quickly. You like, out, whatever. Like yeah, their exactly. entire game before Scarab God is on the table is making sure that they can ignore it when it comes down. Yeah. Yeah, everyone has to play around it. Man, that card is so busted. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It also is so fascinating because in some ways it also means that... So the... yeah, I think I can't believe people didn't think of this earlier and also we didn't in that you don't just play four of Raska's Contempt to answer Scarab God. You do it so Scarab God also doesn't have targets if they play it with nine mana. Yeah. Right? Like... In some ways, like there are certain things you so that's also a, a game plan you have to think about when playing all these Vraska's contempt. That's why the Magma sprays are so good. Exactly. No, it's yeah, this matters like a ton. So like when you choose to like if you let's say have removal in your hand, um, I don't know, you could in the, for example, in the top eight, there was some blue black control list, two of them, which not surprising, everyone kind of knew that the blue black control decks would be good. Um, let's say you have the option to moment of craving. A champion wits or whatever. I guess you always do it on a champion because it screws up their draw. But um, to, I don't know, Fatal Push because you fetched or was something. Mm -hmm. Fatal Push a champion or Vraska's is contempted or like whatever. Like those are decisions you have to make because of Scarab God, Eternalize. Like, I don't know, like how you use these things are going to matter a lot as well. Like it's not yeah. just to get rid of Scarab God, but also to shut off like Scarab God's fuel for later. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's like your, yeah, your game plans, obviously the best players in the world don't have game plans as simple as I don't cast this card unless it's on Scarab God. No, no, yeah, of course. But like, yeah, there's there's sub cases. Like, I don't want them resurrecting a champion of wits, so I can Vraska's Contempt that. Or like, oh, I've drawn a Gear Hulk. So now I can Vraska's Contempt something, and then the, so, Gear, Hulk, the Gear Hulk is the Vraska's Contempt. So, but like, I'll which that. thing am I Vraska's yeah. Contempting is a very important decision that you have to make. Yeah. Um, because Scarab God also alters the graveyards as opposed to, you know, it, it alters, it changes the entire shape of the game. And that, that card maybe should have been banned, actually, along with everything else, the more I think about it. Which card? Scarab God. Scarab God. It might have actually been, like, if they were going to ban Rampaging Prosodon, like, maybe they should have also banned Scarab God. I know, like, that sounds weird. And, like, I'm all, I'm very anti-ban. But, like, the amount that that card warps the metagame is, like... I, I, I honestly just think we need a little more efficient answers. And it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. But, like, what are you going to do? Print a three-mana exile at instant speed or something? Like... Maybe. I mean, we already have three mana exile at white in white at sorcery speed. So, yeah. I have it in black too, technically. Doomfall. That's never hitting anything. <laughs> <laughs> it counts. Yeah. Uh, you could thought seize it with Doomfall. Yeah. If you're lucky. Can you? Uh, Can you? Yeah, like exiles a card from their hand. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like instant or sorcery for some reason or non creature. Mm. I could be wrong. I mean, I'm now yeah, I have no idea. I wouldn't know. I'm Maybe proud to say I don't know <laughs> and I haven't read that card. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We've come full circle. But yeah, no, like, it's just a bus. It's just an insanely card. Like, nah, nah, it shouldn't actually have been banned. But man, it, it's... Yeah, man, this card's nuts. It's actually been seeing a lot more play. Yeah, you just take a non-land card and exile it. Yeah, that's really good. You can get their Scarab God. <laughs> There's a bunch of things now that need to be exiled. Yeah, like Scarab God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cards are... Uh, it's pretty good. 
All right, we're over 60 minutes. We oh, should geez, wrap this, how wrap how this up. Oh, yeah. Cam, you got to blow up for us? Yeah, so um, speaking of game plans, uh, I thought I had a good game plan, but my opponent had a better one. Uh, so you just mentioned Moment of Craving, and this is a blow it around Moment of Craving. So anyway, I was playing uh, Rivals of Ixalan Booster Draft last night, and so f- first off, it was like a train wreck because I was in red-black aggro pack one, and then I opened a Hadana's Climb, and I was like, oh, this is fine, I can switch. So I just ended that up card, playing. That card, no. Yeah, right, it's if not, you're not, I never, if, you're un, if you're unclear or don't play a lot of limited, that card is just completely bananas. Yeah, so like mini blowout is that I switched into four colors and like took Traveler's Amulets and like tap lands. You played yourself. Uh, so that I could play this Adonis Climb and drew it once when it didn't matter. Never saw it all night despite ranching my deck for it. <laughs> so <laughs> mini blowout. But yeah, that's what happens. So I had just like this mix of like medium four color creatures. Uh, and my opponent has a needle tooth raptor. Little roaster? The little that, little roasty, yeah. The one that, when it takes damage, you deal five to something. Yeah, the enraged roast something. And I have an impale and a Vraska's contempt in my deck. So I'm like, oh, maybe I'll get there. But I'm just not drawing them. And it comes to the point where like I can't keep letting this thing hit me for two because I'm getting low. So I have to try and trade with it. If I trade with one of my if I block with a two two, it's going to shoot my three three. So I should just block with the three three so that it has to use the enraged trigger to fa- to finish it off. That makes sense. So I block with the 3-3, three, three, and my 3-3 three, three gets Moment of Craving. Which means the 3-3 three, three now dies in combat and still triggers Enrage on the Needletooth Raptor, which shoots something else, and it's around next turn. And it's still around to roast something the next turn? Yeah. That's a pretty good, like, three for one off a Moment of Craving. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, it, it was two mana removal spells uh, in combat, right? I lost that match single-handedly to that Needletooth Raptor. Game, game one, it man. killed me. Game two, this happened. And then I finally kill it, and then it got recovered. <laughs> <laughs> I just died. <laughs> oh, yes. That is a beating. Yeah, that That's moment, a good one. That moment of craving was rough. Yeah, that card's awesome. And I had, seen a bunch of, very good. I had seen a bunch of divine verdicts. So I'm like, worst case scenario, like it either one for ones this Needletooth Raptor or it gets divine verdict. Was not expecting moment of craving. Yeah, moment of craving, very good. Oh, so Ugh. a lot of copies in the top eight, actually, because all the blue-black control were remaining a bunch of it. Freak mm. Skier saw a standard play, and this card's just... Yep. Better. Yeah. The card's yeah. great. You can double up on it to kill a hazard. Oh. Not a great game plan, but maybe that's bullet point three or yeah, something. Some, <laughs> yeah, sometimes the best you can do. Story of my life. <laughs> that's all I got. All right. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Thank you all for joining the club this week. Make sure, as always, you check out wizardtower.com <laughs> for all your magic single needs. Uh, also, if you want to get in contact with us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, um, at DWC Podcast One, that's just organized Wizard Club Podcast on Facebook. Uh, and however you listen to this podcast, whether it's on Podbean, iTunes, or your podcast app, leave us a review, rate the podcast, share it with your friends. Everything helps the podcast grow. What are you guys laughing at? <laughs> that's funny. All right. We'll see you all next Later. week. Later. Later.